Nice launch trajectory and countdown net. Pad is clear. 10, 9, 8. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Thanks for tuning in to the 43rd launch of Starlink. Today, we'll be sending another 53 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit from Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, just under seven minutes from now. My name is Kate Tice, and I'm a quality engineering manager here at SpaceX, and I'll be your host for today's mission. Start of engine chill. As you may know, Starlink is a constellation of satellites operating in low Earth orbit and provides high-speed, low-latency internet to places all over the globe, particularly in remote areas where connectivity is limited or completely unavailable. Starlink is now live in the Caribbean, which brings us to servicing 33 total global markets. If you're interested in seeing all the areas where Starlink service is available, check out our availability map at starlink.com slash map, which you see right there. The green shows you where service is available today and where there's a wait list. And Stage the gray- one, RP1 load is complete. And the gray shows you where service is pending. Today's launch gets us one step closer to adding even more green to that map. We've got one of our shorter webcasts today with live coverage ending just after the first stage landing and second engine cutoff. But as always, we will confirm deployment of our Starlink satellites via SpaceX's social channels. Now, as most of you are aware, what makes Falcon 9 really unique is that it's currently the only orbital class rocket capable of flying over and over again. SpaceX has reflown first stage first stages since 2017 and fairing halves since 2019. Now, as you can see on your screen there, this rocket has soot markings on it, indicating that this booster has flown before. Today will mark its 12th flight, having previously launched GPS-33, Turksat 5A, Transporter 2, and eight Starlink missions. We'll be attempting to recover this booster again on our drone ship, which you see there, although a little rainy, <laughs> just read the instructions. It's currently parked a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Now the first stage's objective- Falcon 9 tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. First stage's objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space with the help of its nine Merlin engines, and then separate from the rest of the rocket and return to Earth for landing. While the second stage returns to Earth, or excuse me, while the first stage returns to Earth, the second stage will continue on its journey, igniting its single. Strong back retract has started. All right, so there we heard call out that the strong back retraction has begun. If you watch closely on your screen, you should be able to see it there. Uh, so the second stage uh, will ignite its single engine, which is optimized for the vacuum of space. The second stage is what will carry the 53 Starlink satellites to their destination in low Earth orbit. Now, speaking of our satellites, they're safely enclosed inside that large barrel structure with the pointed nose at the very top of the rocket. Uh, we refer to that as the payload fairing. The job of the fairing is to protect our cargo during ascent until the vehicle is outside the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the fairing separates to expose the satellites to the vacuum of space. Once separated, the fairing halves will fall back to Earth for recovery and future reuse. Now that structure there that you see uh, it's retracting slightly away from the vehicle, that is the strong back, which is part of the transporter erector, or TE. We use it to roll the rocket out from the hangar to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, powers, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. So we just saw that strong back uh, open its clamp arms and retract. Now at T0, hydraulics will pull that strong back even further away from Falcon Stage 9. Stage one, locks load is complete. As it lifts off from the pad. 
So there we just heard the call out that locks load is complete on the first stage. Locks load is still undergoing for the second stage. Now, as many of you know, SpaceX and NASA have worked together for many years to put both cargo and people into space. And this week, NASA announced another opportunity for our teams to work together. SpaceX was selected by NASA for the Communications Services Project to demonstrate high throughput, low latency data relay services for NASA programs. We'll leverage our technology, such as space lasers, to provide NASA with big improvements in connectivity and throughput for space-based assets. This could in turn help NASA transition from their current in-space communication system, known as TDRS, to a more commercial option, so stay tuned for more on that. So we're just about two minutes left to go until liftoff, and Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. Expecting to hear the call for second stage LOX load completion. At this point, Falcon 9 is fully loaded with its fuel, which is RP-1, or Rocket Propellant 1. First stage is fully stage loaded. Stage 2, LOX load is complete. All right, so first stage is fully loaded, as well as sec second stage fully loaded with its liquid oxygen. So there we have a shot of the... Yeah, closeouts have started. <laughs> so there we can see a shot, beautiful view of Pad 40. Um, and we can see that that white cloud is forming around the vehicle. That's totally normal. Uh, now that LOX load has completed, the excess liquid oxygen is now venting from the lines that we use to complete that propellant loading. Next milestone is we'll hear that the vehicle is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. All right, so there's that call. At this point, the onboard flight computers now have control of the countdown. Falcon 9, Starlink, LD is go for launch. All right, and now with that final go for launch, go for launch from our launch director. At this point in time, the weather weather is looking to cooperate. The range remains green, ready to support. Uh, and the teams are tracking no issues. So at this point, all systems are go for launch. Let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our 53 Starlink satellites into seconds. orbit. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition and lift off of Starlink 414. Vehicle's pitching downrange. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. As you can see on your screen and heard by the cheers of folks with me here at Mission Control, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites. Although at liftoff, gravity Power is pulling straight down on the rocket. As we ascend, we actually tilt the engines. The technical term for that is gimbling for all my rocket nerds out there. Uh, and that actually turns the rocket horizontally. Falcon is supersonic. So we're still going up, but with that gimbling, we're now also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. That's what we call a gravity turn. Now we're going... Max Q. There we heard the call out for Max Q. That's the point in which the vehicle experiences the greatest dynamic pressure. So we're going to throttle those engines back up. And we're coming up to a series of events that will happen in quick succession. For those of you that have followed our launches previously, you know not to blink. The first of those three events Start is... Start of MVAC engine chill. All right, so we heard call out MVAC engine chill. We're basically throwing, flowing some of the super chilled liquid oxygen through the turbo pumps of the second stage MVAC engine in preparation for its ignition. 
Um, but first, we have to do MECO, or main engine cutoff. Uh, that's where all nine Merlin engines shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next milestone, which is stage separation, where the first stage and second stage will separate. Uh, as the first stage makes its way back to Earth for landing, the second stage continues, with, continues its journey with SES-1, or second engine startup. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine will ignite and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. A view there inside our inner stage. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. All right, so all three of those events in quick succession. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we can see that the fairing halves have separated, exposing our Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see those grid fins deploying on the first stage. Both stages are on nominal trajectories. All right, great news there. Everything looking nominal for both the first and second stage. Now, while the second stage is doing its job, the first stage is actually coming back home to Earth, and it will execute two burns today. The first burn is the entry burn. We will uh, ignite three of its engines, three of the nine Merlin engines at the bottom of the first stage uh, to help slow the stage down. The second burn is the landing burn, and that's where we ignite one engine, just the center engine, that brings the, and that will bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Uh, that drone ship is about the size of a football field. Everything continues to look Acquisition nominal of signal, Bermuda. for both first and second stage. Beautiful shot of the second stage MVAC engine there on the right hand side of your screen. With the beautiful blue marble rotating slowly behind it. Now that first stage, as you can see, is um, positioning, it's beginning to uh, basically float its way back to Earth. It's, it's currently uh, above the Earth's atmosphere. In order to help it make its way back through the Earth's atmosphere, we're going to perform a re-entry burn. Not currently visible from that view, um, we have landing legs stowed on the side of the booster. Falcon 9 is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber aluminum honeycomb. They're placed symmetrically uh, at the base of the rocket and stowed during ascent, and they will deploy just prior to landing. As we come up to the entry burn, a reminder this is a three engine burn meant to slow the first stage as it hits the thicker layers of the Earth's atmosphere. As you can see, Falcon 9 has grid fins on it. It's equipped with four hypersonic grid fins. They're positioned near the top of the first stage and near the base of the inner stage. So basically where those two pieces of hardware connect. Currently, the first stage is uh, using its grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. If you watch closely, you can see those stage grid fins two activate. trajectory continues to look nominal. Those grid fins help orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during descent. Now there, we just saw a puff of gas um, that is just nitrogen gas. Uh, we use nitrogen gas bursts for attitude control on the first stage. Stage one entry burn startup. So we can see the first stage has... Stage one FTS is saved begun its entry burn. We have reignited three of the nine Merlin engines to help slow the booster down as it re-enters the thick part of the Earth's atmosphere. This burn will last about 20 seconds. Everything continues to look nominal for second stage. We can see that that entry burn has concluded for first stage. Again, that uh, white gas that you see coming from the booster are 
uh, the coal, excuse me, or the, the nitrogen gas bursts that we use for attitude control. As I previously mentioned, um, you were able to see the soot markings on this booster left over from its previous flights, its previous 11 flights. This is the 12th flight for this booster. Stage one, trajectory nominal. The rocket grade kerosene, or RP1, that we use as fuel for Falcon 9 uh, is carbon based. So when the fuel burns, it generates soot. Uh, because the reentry occurs with engines first, the booster actually flies through its own plume, which deposits that soot onto the side of the rocket. So be sure, be sure to check out the feed from the onboard camera. Um, during landing, you may be able to see that soot sticking to the lens. <laughs> Uh, when we light the center engine for the landing burn, we gimbal that engine uh, also to help guide the stage in addition to the grid fins. So there we can see that booster making a re-entry through the clouds now. Everything continues to look nominal with second stage, stage there. Landing burn. Stage two, terminal guidance. All right, we heard the call out and can see there on screen the landing burn has begun. Watch closely, we should be able to see the drone ship come into view. This drone ship is about the size of a football field. Stage one landing like deploy. As you can see, this booster has Stage touched down confirmed. once again. This is the 12th recovery for this particular booster. Stage two FDS is safe. This recovery also marks the 115th recovery of a first stage booster. For a shot of that booster on our drone ship, just read the instructions. Up next will be second engine cutoff. Second engine cutoff. Which we Perfect saw just signal. there. Cape. At this point in time, we are waiting to hear confirmation of good orbit for our second stage now that the second engine that Not Marlin... Nominal parking orbit. All right, and there's that confirmation that we we're waiting to hear. So with that confirmation of a successful second engine cutoff and good orbit, we'll be ending our webcast for today's launch. As I mentioned previously, we'll be confirming payload deployment via our social channels, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you to the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting our mission. And of course, thank you to our viewers and all our Starlink customers for using our service at this time. If you're interested in signing up for if you're interested in signing up for Starlink service, head on over to Starlink.com.